My name is M1 Hollingsworth, and today I'm gonna to go over the loadout that a military working dog handler would have. Canine handlers will go out on patrol duty and they act as a deterrence. They may be called to assist with narcotics detection. If we get a bomb threat, just provide some detection, do a sweep. So we use them for whatever the mission set requires. So today we'll go over some equipment that you're gonna see out in the field as a military working dog handler. And then second, some of the medical equipment that we also have to make sure that our dogs are safe in case of an emergency happens. Uh, one of the first things we're gonna have is a muzzle. So for the military working dog, whether that's downrange or stateside, uh, we're gonna use this to make sure that the dog is safely uh, able to be cared for in case of an emergency and uh, traveling to and from a location. Each military working dog has their primary reward. Most of the time it's either a, a Kong or a Kong with a rope. It's used to reinforce uh, desired behaviors. So when they do a good job, whether that's for obedience tasks, patrol, or when they find a source of odor, then we reward them with this reward object, which is the Kong. Uh, another reward object is a PVC pipe. Uh, this is the tug reward object. So different objects, they make it to where I can manipulate the reward in different ways to shape behaviors. With a Kong with a rope, at certain areas, I may be only able to grab it and at a certain manipulation. But for this, I can grab and guide them in different directions and shape behaviors that way. So for our toolkit, the other thing that we'll use is different size leashes. So you'll have leashes ranging from uh, 30 feet, 6 feet, 15, 10, and then our standard 6 foot leash. When I go inside of a, a building, I can work a little bit closer. It's going to be more advantageous for me to work on a 6 foot leash. We have a retractable leash. We also have these for our military working dogs as well. If used properly, you can again be in a distance and have your dog work uh, independently further away from you. And when would you use a retractable leash over like a 30 foot rope leash? It can all vary. If it's easier for me to have it tethered while I have my weapon and I'm surveilling the area, I can also use the retractable in my toolkit if it's going to help me make sure that my dog can work independently and I can also assist in a different manner. Another variation, you can uh, use a bungee. For this, I could attach it uh, to my uh, body and make it to where the dog is, is next to me. So say if I need to do tactical movements or I'm in a, in a tight area and I need to have two hands to be working uh, in a different area, then I can use my two hands on something else rather than uh, having it dedicated to holding onto the leash for my dog. We deploy to various different locations. Sometimes whether it's uh, extremely cold or if we have uh, extremely hot, uh, we wanna make sure that our dogs paws are taken care of. So we can put these little shoes on them and make sure that their paws are taken care of, especially when uh, for hot seasons and they're on asphalt or a rough period that could uh, scrape up their paws. Next we have their collar. So different variations, different clasps. Uh, this just goes around their neck and this is what the leash is going to be tethered to. Why are there two different collars right there? Uh, just two different, two different types. Specifically, say if they had the variation with the handle then you could grab the dog and it's more of a, a tactical area where i can use that in my toolkit if i need to grab the dog quickly instead of going underneath next tool we have in our toolkit is our choke chains so say if i have my dog attached to the flat collar i might want that to mean something differently than when the dog is on the choke chain you would use it as a tool to communicate desired or undesired behaviors what do you exactly mean by that so Say if my dog was not responding to a specific command, I could communicate with a very light leash tension on via the choke chain. So another piece of gear that we, we might have is going to be our harnesses. So various different styles. Again, this is, uh, allows us to have more tactical maneuverability. We can use the handles during different situations to again, manipulate our dog. If it works, it's also uh, something we use as a, as a training tool. So say if I'm trying to do uh, drive building activities with my dog, I can use this as something to make it to where the pressure and the tension is more on their body instead of uh, manipulating their uh, head in a specific way. Other gear that we have in our bag is going to be uh, these doggles. This is going to be used to protect the dog's face or eyes. Say if the dog's on like a helicopter or different things like that, they might be used. The other thing that we're going to have in our, in our bag is going to be our water. So we always make sure that we have water for our dogs. Uh, they're going to be working for us, so we want to make sure that they're, they're taken care of. We have various different bottles that we can use, and then also our water bowls that we can have to plop it down, pour the water in, and ensure that they're taken care of after working all day. This right here is just, again, uh, just a normal plastic bowl. You can take this apart, put the water in there, easily to take apart and clean. 
And that's it for this bag. So this is gonna be our basic medical equipment that we carry for our military working dog. Inside, one of the first things you're going to find is our uh, thermometer for our dog. It's very important that we understand our military working dog's ideal working temperature to see if it's either lower or higher than normal, because that's gonna give us a strong indication on how the dog is gonna be able to perform and if it needs to seek medical attention. There's many different thermometers that we can use. Uh, this one specifically is a rectal thermometer. This is gonna be our safety gloves. Uh, the times that we're gonna be using these is if I need to uh, an open wound or something like that, or if I want to make sure that I don't have any uh, debris or bacteria on my hands. Uh, other things that we're gonna find in our kit is gauze. So we'll use this along with the tape. Uh, if there's a sore, a cut, a laceration, uh, we'll make sure that we do that first aid, first initial treatment, and then get them to a veterinary facility as soon as we can. Uh, in the field, we also have uh, various different equipments where if the dog's having breathing problems, I can also do uh, an emergency trach until we can get them to a veterinary specialist. Other things we have in this kit, we make sure that we groom them and take care of their nails and coat. So if their nails are getting too long, we have our clippers to make sure that they're taken care of. Why is it important to make sure that their nails aren't too long? One, just for safety, and then also uh, so they're able to maneuver and able to perform their job. And then taking care of their coat, obviously for uh, sanitary reasons, make sure that they're staying safe and, and healthy. Do the dogs like to be brushed? Some dogs more than others, but if they're going to be in our program, we do make sure that they're comfortable having the muzzle being put on them and also with being pet. So certain dogs are like it more than others. In case we're trying to take off say a harness, if there's an injury or something, we also have scissors to, to cut as well, take off bandages and open things up as well. The other thing we're gonna have is a different material for a, a splint. So in case the dog injures their leg, uh, we can stabilize that and make sure it's not gonna go anywhere again until we can get them to a professional that can take care of their, their leg. When we are out in the training environment or deployed, we use these doggy bags to ensure that we pick up after our military working dogs as well. Some other things that we would have is the bags of food uh, that we would have with us. The other thing is our military worker dog collapsible kennel. So the collapsible kennel is utilized by being a safe place that I can transport the military working dog in, whether that's in a vehicle or a aircraft. And this is the equipment and loadout that a military working dog handler would have with them, whether going on a mission or going on deployment.